Well, now I want to turn to uh, Steve Sherrill for one of the, uh, the really interesting segments that, uh, of our show that's become. I get a lot of favorable comments about it. And it's, what do you want to talk about? So Steve, welcome. What do you want to talk about? Well, tonight we're going to first quote William Shakespeare. And uh, he had a saying, to whether or not to whether, that is the question. <laughs> so that's what we're going to talk about tonight is weathering. Weathering, of course, is a, is a personal choice that we all make. We can either weather, or we don't have to weather. Today, we've seen Tom Farrell weather a, a station. Um, we saw, uh, we know that Gary has a plastic kit that started out as pure white. When he finishes, I know it's not going to look like that because he's going to weather it. So let's take a look at some weathering. And this is just some of the things that I have done. <clears throat> Whoops. You can't see only oh, excuse me. Okay. So there's an item for my granddaughter. Completely unweathered, but ready for the, the, the uh, show. Look at the pumpkins. I'm ready for the my build. Now here's the same model weathered. Doesn't even look like the same model. But it's exactly the same with just a few detail parts added. Then I have some disconnects, which I have. These are Lionel disconnects. The first one is out of the box. The second one, whoops. Why flat, did I know that paint. was going to happen? <laughs> yeah. The third one has got two different paints on it. The third one, I started out with rust colored and painted the whole thing rust and then lightly went back over with black. And so you get a completely different look. You get a little bit of the rust coming through. Here's two box cars. One with this paint starting to come off and one out of the box stock. So these are things that enhance our, our railroad and make it look a lot better. Uh, our models no longer look like they came out of the box. They're more railroady looking. And uh, I have different methods that I use which one of the items that I use is, of course, the rattle can. I do have a little attachment which goes on the top, which looks like a handle. And it fits on and gives you a much better control when you're shooting your model. For the new cans that have the taller, the thicker tops, as you can see here, they also have another, another size that goes on. And of course I get this at Home Depot or somewhere like that. But it really gives you a nice control for a much better flow than if you don't have this on there and you, get, you don't get your finger nearly as much paint on it. Another thing I have is called um, a cordless airbrush. And if you've never seen one of these things, I had the pleasure to use one, the well worth the $35 that you spend. And most of them are complete with the dual action airbrush, a little tank. They have a um, gravity feed bottle. And they come with the brushes and also the electrical connections. They'll go about 45 minutes of spraying and uh, they, they have the brushes to clean. And so they're really look really neat. Hey nice Steve, little... did you get that at Micromark? No, okay. I get this off of eBay. Um, and I, I, before Micromark ever came out with these, these actually started as makeups, makeup applicators for women. 
they used to spray on their, uh, what do you call it? Anyway, they used to spray on their makeup. So I don't know if you can hear it, but here it is on. That's as much noise as it makes. I found it especially handy when you're, when you've gone over something like rocks, um, I have a big rock wall, and occasionally I would would uh, discover that I missed a place, and I would just pick this up, go over, and, and hit that. Also, if you have uh, trees, a tree tree hillside, you can go over and put lighter colors on it to get an, a much nicer blended mix. So those are excellent. How's that powered, it, Steve? It's powered by a, a LiPo battery and you plug it in the bottom and it's got lights on it. Like a lot of the electrical things we, we have today, when you turn it on, you get a, a number of lights, okay? So when you charge it, it'd be four lights. So after you use it, it gets down to three, two, and one. It automatically goes off. So it's a really, really nice uh, item to have. Somebody, have somebody that was somebody that just shared a uh, a comment about uh, Walmart had a better one. Could they elaborate on that a little? I don't know. Yeah, that was me. It's uh, cartooning. Um, yeah, Walmart had a. Uh, a little stronger one. A lot of the other ones are about uh, nine or ten psi. The mm -hmm. Walmart one was rated around thirteen to fourteen. Well, this is twenty-five. Or uh, sorry, um, it was higher than that. That was another one. Yeah, it's Clark, was that, uh, was... it, that one's rated at twenty-five. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that's what this Walmart one was. I'd have to get it out. It's been a long Clark, time. Clark, was that a makeup airbrush? Uh, they didn't market it. They just sell, sold it as an airbrush. Okay. Uh, it's USB uh, powered um, and they had it. I got one. Uh, I know a couple of the other guys uh, that have been on here. Um, Bob, Bob Farquhar and that uh, put me on to one to, to it and uh, he's had it. Um, I, I can look for the I think I may have the info still on it. I can uh, maybe post it in the chat after. Well, this particular one is sold by a company called Spray Gunner. Yeah. They're out of Florida. And they have adapters now that you can get other makes of airbrush. You can put all, all your makes on here, you know? And that was the reason why a lot of people kind of shied away from these in the beginning. Now, I've had this about four years. So there seem to be a lot of choices if you go on somewhere like Amazon or uh, just eBay, you'll see a lot of them. But to me, I, I think they're well worth the money. Uh, you don't have to worry about any cord length or anything like that as far as the air. Um, it's just a, a, a nice item. But I know that uh, one of the things about weathering, and I, I don't know if, if Tom or Gary um, do this or not, or anybody else. If you live along a, um, a dirt road, Travel on a dirt road stirs up a lot of dirt and dust. Do you reflect that on your buildings, on your houses, um, on your cars, that kind of thing? These are all little, little things that you can add to weathering to make your scene more realistic. Um, there, there are probably a lot of other things you could do. I know Tom was just talking about the paint looking chalky. Well, there was a time when, when paint actually looked chalky. Um, they had alkaline or something in the paint, I believe, Tom. Yeah. And that created that look. Um, so uh, I don't know what era you're actually modeling or what year, but uh, I've seen houses that had that look. Um, older houses that were painted or not painted very often. So, you know. Sometimes we make we make mistakes are not satisfied, but it's a prototypical. Yeah. Uh, so it's just the weathering really, really creates a nice atmosphere in the railroad. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any questions or any comments. 
but uh, I just thought I would introduce this tonight and kind of put it out there because we, all of our modelers are really weathering up their, uh, their finished models to make them look really nice. I'm really looking forward to see how Gary finishes his off. So I guess that's it for tonight and let's, we have more questions. Well, I've never yeah. seen it. I'd never seen a spray gun like that before. I'd never even heard of one. Good. Did you hear it? Yeah, almost. Yeah, you can't hear it. So, <laughs> and they had some of them are, uh, you know, ergonomically correct and they, they conform to your hand and, you know, whatever you want. I just wanted a basic item. And mm -hmm. you, you do get, it, it, it may seem awkward in the beginning, but it, it really gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh, you don't have to deal with that hose. You don't have to, you know, there's no uh, limit on the length. You can have to be away from the compressor. And it, it's so quiet. I mean, just, you know, it's wonderful. So that's it for tonight, folks. Well, Steve, thank yeah. you so very much. Look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. <laughs>